Excuse me, Tony. Um, yeah, I was going to ask. It, there is no generalization here, but um, like it's it's an opinion, right? Like non-duality. It's an opinion. What is non-duality? No, do you? Okay, it's a, it's a, a non-duality is an opinion. <coughs> No, no, no. It's opinion. It's opinion. Non-duality. Non-duality is just a title which suggests that there is nothing to this sector. Right. Well, it's not, if it's an opinion, I don't want to say you then it's someone's opinion. Yeah, I don't want to say you specifically, but it's your opinion. Mm -hmm. like, well, if you think so. <coughs> Sorry? If you think it is, I don't have yeah. an opinion. But. Fair enough. Well, as far as this is concerned, there isn't someone who has an opinion. I understand what you mean, yeah, but it's obviously from the perspective of how I decide to see, you know, my experience. If I experience it as your opinion, yeah. then that's what it is, right? For you, that, yeah, that experience seems true. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Tony. Uh, could you say something more about the nature of me? Because you say it's like embodied, it's in all the cells, it's, yeah, it's the, like part of the brain. Yeah, the brain, apparently the organism, the brain sophisticates in the first year, let's say. That's simplification. The me doesn't appear until after the birth. So the brain is very simple in the way at birth. So there is no sense of identity. And then, the brain sophisticates, it's an organism that sophisticates in the first year and, and is then able to create a sense of, of there being something in it that has a separate identity. We call it um, self consciousness. Self consciousness <coughs> arises in the tiny human child. Not always, but usually. And when that arises, the energy of it is a contracted energy only felt in the body, which also creates a sense of. The, the self-conscious or the individual, let's say, that then they form, feeling as though it's separate. And that isn't uh, an idea or a thought, it's actually an energetically held thing in the body, and it's held in the cells of the body. It, but it comes and goes in the day and in the night, in the deep state there is no sense of anyone. And then when, when the dreaming starts to happen, then there's a, a reconnection with the feeling of being separate. But as the child grows into an adult and meets lots of other apparently separate selves, somewhere the whole of the world that it lives in goes on confirming the sense of there being a dualistic world which is real. And so the, the person that go, comes out of that comes to believe that they are real. I am something, the world is another something that's happening to me. And, uh, and that's what takes form. So the sense of Self-awareness or self-consciousness becomes very, very consolidated. So
So most, if you walk out in the street now, most people believe they are a person. And what, what's been suggested here is that that's an illusion. And neuroscientists have discovered in the last 15 <coughs> years or so, and have written a book that nobody takes much notice of them for, confirming that the idea or the belief that you are an individual with free will and choice is a complete illusion. So they've tried experiments to show that any apparent choice that's made is made by the brain, not by the, the individual that seems to be there. But directly the choice is made, the individual takes ownership of that choice and assumes it's that person that's choosing. <coughs> okay. Yeah, thank you. But what are people then? Sorry? What are people then? What are people? What are people? What are people? What are people? When you talk about the sense of soul, is an imaginary energy which creates a sense of individuality. Can you read that now? So, um, what you call people, huh? let's say, in simple terms, are, are bod the body which believes that it is an individual, that there's an individual in there. I am a person. I am a person. And, and that personhood is real. That's what we're suggesting here is an illusion. Can you define personhood, sir? Sorry? What, what do you mean by personhood? I understand the word, but can you reframe it differently? I don't know. Only that if you walk into the, well, if you walk into the road now and ask somebody, are you a real person? <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably hit you or lock you up. But uh, basically, most people believe they are real individuals, separate individuals, self-conscious and self-aware. And they have free will and choice and they live in a story that's real. Really well, what are people apart from an arising of color and sound and touch? That's all. And for all the there. person, that is an experience of colour. Let's keep with colour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The experience for the individual is that colour is happening to the individual. Mm -hmm. the, this is my experience. The red is happening to me. Mm -hmm. What's being suggested here is that just red is happening. There's no me. It happens to. Simple as that. Because yeah. I mean, the me is inferred from the experience of colour. The me is inferred, it's not there, it's implied. The me is implied or inferred from the experience of colour. But there well, is no me. The experience there is not the experience of colour. Oh, for the me it is. It's its experience of colour. The me think, believes and feels that it is experience something called colour. But so it takes ownership of the experience of red. But there is no me, just a thought well, of that, yeah. that. Tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is no me. All there is is wholeness. Within the wholeness arises a contracted energy, which is wholeness in a contracted form, in which the illusion of there being an individual seems very real. And what we're suggesting here is that that's an illusion. But out of that feeling of being an individual, and I am a real person, comes the experience of story, free will and choice, cause and effect, and all those things. But the individual are real. So the colour red for the individual is something that happens to the individual. I am experiencing red. When there's no I, there's just red. And that's the mystery. The mystery is there's no one that knows red, there's nobody experiencing, there's nobody that's aware of red, there's just red. So there is no discontraction there. But if this person is looking at you, he's looking, he's seeing a blue shirt. I'm, I'm seeing a blue shirt. This contraction is seeing a blue shirt. This contraction is seeing a blue shirt. But there is no contraction. There is just blue. This is what you say. Well, saying. if there's no contraction, there, yeah, there's no contraction. There's no sense of separation. There's just blue. It's a mystery. It can't be described. That blue, that red, can't be described. If, it was, if you could describe it, then there would be somebody who would know that blue or that red. Mm -hmm. It's unknowable. This is about unknowing. Mm -hmm. This is unknowable. It just is. And knowing, knowing that the mystery is a mystery? Uh, knowing that there's a mystery is only someone, an individual, knowing there's a mystery. That's just another bit of knowledge. It's useless. Under, this has got nothing to do with understanding something. Okay. Thank you.
you have any advice for the average three-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have any emails. <laughs> There's no one to advise. If I thought there was someone to advise, I would be a teacher. <laughs> Just a conundrum in my head. It's, yeah. it's about language. So, language is split up in, I've probably asked you this before, subject, object, and verb. So, in the natural reality, with no one there, without any, <coughs> language is just something that's happening. Language isn't the cause of the separation. Oh, but, oh, on the other hand, language is also energy, it's not, not energy. Right. Absolutely with you. Uh, language essentially is dualistic. But is a language, is it a phenomenon that has, a, I mean, animals communicate, and I presume they live in the natural reality. Everything so else but the human being lives in the natural reality. Everything what? Everything else but the human <laughs> lives in the natural reality. Yeah. So, so my question is, so in, in my head, it probably is unanswerable, is 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 that is the language itself married in, sort of wedded to the whole idea of the whole concept of meanness? Is it is it is it kind of born of the self of self the sense of self or no, just it just everything arises? Yeah, but language needn't be married in. It, 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 all the time there's a me, and the me would see every the aspect from a language or mainly from a language point of view. Because it essentially name, uh, language labels things yes. in a simple term. So that, uh, that's what the me is doing. It's constantly labeling it. That's a tree. Mm. Uh, uh, so that uh, uses the language, which then becomes a sort of dualistic mm. expression of something. If there wasn't anyone, actually in, strip, actually in the end, if there wasn't anyone, they wouldn't even call that a tree. It's not a tree. Exactly. It's energy in that form. Yeah. But for simple, for the simplicity of, of, of apparently responding to something, they would use the language which seems to point to dualism. But the language that would come out of no thing, as is happening here, wouldn't reinforce the sense of the tree being an object. But it also means that it, it, it's what you say, this cannot be explained, because the very term communication uh, implies trying to glue no, an no, I and a thou, and there is no I and thou. No. So There's no language that can, can the language can only really point to this. If it's coming out of no thing, it points only to this. If it's coming out of a sense of being an individual, it will point the other way towards what it points to do. And, and, and likewise thinking, because obviously thinking, uh, mar you know, thoughts, they attach themselves in language. Only, only to the me. Uh, when thought arises in the me, the yeah. me takes ownership of the thought and then makes a marriage with it. Yeah. A sort of energy with it. So you get, you get like some thoughts, not all, 
I like on a CD, they keep on coming back. So, so what's the mind-body organism with nobody there? Though those characteristics of thought, they just something arising. They come and go. They can't find anybody to talk to, so they get bored. <laughs> so it's, it's almost like a like a machine. So. All the time there's somebody there, the, 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 the thought somehow gets attached to the person because the person takes ownership of everything. Mm. More difficult for rich man to enter the thing, and the me becomes very rich and it takes ownership of the thought. And then it, when it owns it, it gives the thought energy and it feeds the thought. So you get a CD going called "She Doesn't Love Me Anymore." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what is communication? Oh, it's just what it is, it's communication. But it, it depends what you mean. If there's a communication uh, out of nothing, it's just saying? a response out of nothing. Is it's there communication com between two people, it's, it's... Is there communication without words, without language? Uh, I think there's an, there's an, an energetic <laughs> Well, I know there's an energetic communication that's happening right now. It doesn't need work. Don't forget that when the me is sort of the me inhibits intuition. When the me is not there any longer, then intuition is is very open. So it's very intuitive about energetics, the energy. There's a, there's an energy of of contraction and an energy of boundlessness and an energy of joy and an energy. Everything. In the end, everything is only energy. You could say another word for oneness or wholeness, which I always think is a bit spiritual, is energy. I like the word energy. All of this is energy. So whatever happens is, whatever happens is arising in this energy. A pattern, only a pattern, yeah. As this energy. This energy is nothing arising as an energy. about like partnership, like meeting when a meeting arises or happens. What makes it click? Or like apparently? Or is that like what's going on there? It's only apparent. Everything is only. There isn't anything that isn't only in appearance. Oh, I don't think I'm quite clear what you're asking. Yeah, because like we meet someone, we marry. Or oh, happens, you know? <coughs> strange, uh, relationship well, there isn't any. But if, the, if a me marries another me, they think they have to have a relationship. But if there's nobody there. Well, then, then there is, then, then, then it can still happen. Yeah, nobody happens, can, but... can live with nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
just the creation of me? Sorry? Is it love just the creation totally of me? Totally love. Me is the beloved. Okay. It's so, the whole thing is totally, but it's unconditional love. It's not the love, the breathing of us love. <laughs> you love me. If you don't love me, I won't love you. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's 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 when it's all over. The love, the unconditional love that's seen there is stunning initially because it's so it's such a contrast with what was there. It's immeasurable. Wow. That's what. Well, I'm going to say that's what keeps me going. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. And it feels like there's some similarity 
similarity in, in, in death and the beloved and yeah, well, there is. the blessing upon but us. The beloved is death, of course. Yeah. The lover won't let you go until you die. Yeah. The love, the, the, the perfect lover is completely and utterly ruthless. So all the time you're apparently apart from, <coughs> from the perfect lover, you are unhappy. And that's the way it is until you die and then it embraces you. Not in any willful or meaning, not, there's not something out there doing that, that's just the way it is. Tony, on the, on the subject of, of what it's like with other apparent people before and after this shift, uh, my experience was that before, and I was on a spiritual quest, oh, really? yeah, there were spiritual people and they were, oh, yeah. do you know all that? Bollocks. <laughs> and um, then, there's no such thing as spiritual anymore. No, it's, this is like a spiritual message. Yeah, so people talk about spiritual this and spiritual that and conscious Conscious dancing yeah. and conscious food and conscious <laughs> nonsense, right? <laughs> and then it's like it's, there's no difference. No. It's like you know, everything is divine and nothing is. It's, it's the same. There's no. In that sense, yeah, divine is a bit of a funny word. Yeah, it's kind of those, mean, yeah. It is divine. It's the but it's like so. You know, when you're freaking out and trying to explain to people, then you might encounter resistance. But when you actually see that there aren't this kind of people and that kind of people and that good and bad and all the rest of it, there's no reason to feel to have any division between you and anyone. I totally agree with you, except that I wouldn't say you see it, as far as this is concerned, I don't see that this mm. is not there. It just is what there is. So the whole sense that there's a difference between this and that, or that's more valuable than that, strictly collapses. Mm. The other thing about it is, of course, there's no longer any self-consciousness. There's no longer any sense that there's someone here that has to perform or be a certain way with anybody. That's an amazing feeling. Because the other thing about all of that is that, 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 that there's no longer a sense that there's someone else. There's no longer any projection here on the idea that he is someone. As far as this I'm concerned, I don't, I don't see anybody in this room. There's nobody. There's no one. There's no individual in this room. It's just that individual. So in that sense, there's nothing projected on the other person. Like when somebody's ill, and you, you know, as a as a self here, you go to see another self that's dying of cancer. You know. When you go into the room and you see them, what you're projecting to them on is the belief that they are dying, that they are someone who's dying. Of that has huge energy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it sort of goes on reinforcing what seems to be happening. When there's no one, there isn't anyone dying of cancer. There is, it's complete openness. So it's amazing the difference in that energy. There's a sort of freedom about it, which somehow is an energy that, an energy that is everywhere. Is it the same when you see like really bad news that someone did something really yeah. bad and that doesn't? Same thing. This is just what's happening. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. no longer any. Oh, that's wrong. No, <coughs> it's weird as well. Uh, it's, it's weird, but it's not weird because there isn't anybody there to think it's weird. <laughs> really, it's not, it's just... Are you kind of watching the news a bit? <coughs> I do, uh, this one, you watching the news happens. But also, you don't, it doesn't affect you as much? No, it doesn't at all, in a way, but also there's a sort of involvement in it. There's, uh, you can see the drama, one can see the drama of what's happening. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's, you know, that's simply something that's happening. Mm -hmm. And there can be a sense of one thing happening over there as against another thing that's happening. And you can see through what, what, where those two motivations come from. Mm -hmm. but, they're, but they're again, just what's happening. Very wish for freedom. Me wants to be free, but that's the yeah. joke, isn't it? Me, me wants to be free, to be free and then die. Mm -hmm. Me, me longs to be free, free and fears it because there's a sense in me that the freedom is about its own absence. Yeah. It doesn't matter. 
because it's going to happen anyway. <laughs> How do you deal with someone who is rude to you? So, well, they can't be rude to me because there's no one here to be rude to you. <laughs> so but that's the point. They're, they're, people are, might be rude or say something, but that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It's the song of freedom. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.